talked about the child's right to symmetrical development over time. To ensure that right, we must determine if the child is in fact developing symmetrically or are they starting to develop asymmetrical differences. The problem with an asymmetrical difference, left and right side, is that sometimes it's so minute that it can, cannot be recognized with the naked eye. If it would go away on its own, fine. But there's an old saying, a stitch in time saves nine. And some of these asymmetries seem to grow on their own. I now present the OptiJump system. It's an optical system. Here we have one meter on the floor, 97 beams of light connecting the left side to the right side. As I have the student enter the system and perform the test, we will be measuring precisely to within a millisecond how well their left foot reacts to the ground, contact on the ground, then flight, compared to their right foot. Laura, enter the system. Laura now will start marching. The rhythmical execution of movement of her body. Laura, to the trained eye, looks pretty good. Start the test. We will now gather objective data, not just subjectively how well Laura looks, but objectively how well she is actually functioning. We're doing the test for 20 seconds. All the data we receive is in real time, and at the end of 20 seconds, we will instantly be able to interpret and score the data. Thank you, Laura. Step out. This quickly, we scroll down, we look at the data, and Laura, who looks very symmetrical to the eye, is in fact, with objective measurements, only off by 2%, the amount of time her right foot stays on the ground compared to her left foot, and about one and a half percent how much difference in time her right foot travels through space compared to her left foot. The body is not a perfect machine. It's a dynamic body, and it does have some asymmetry built into it. So what we found by doing thousands and thousands of these tests around the world, that scores of four percent asymmetry or less are considered normal. Where I would differ with that is that if a child was 1% asymmetric, say when they were seven, and now they're two, and now they're three, and now they're four, I wouldn't wait until they were 4% to start asking a question why they were going asymmetrically. So trends towards symmetry, very good. Trends towards asymmetry, questionable. Simple test, 20 seconds. Now we have objective data on the rhythmical movement of the body. With the data of Laura's time, left and right, we also know the speed at which Laura was performing the test, her cadence, the rhythmical execution of movement of her body. What rhythm allowed Laura to be only off by 2%?